Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good morning. In today's video, let's further develop our auto layout application so that every time we're swiping through our pages, we can see different images at the top as well as different text in the middle. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, let me show you what our application looks like right now. And you see the bear paw image at the top doesn't really, uh, doesn't really change when we're swiping to the next page. And what I really want it to do here is to do this where I'm swiping through the next page, you get the heart, and then the next you get this leaf image like so. And how am I going to do that in our current application? Well, I'm going to start modifying this swiping controller class to include some different image names and make sure to watch lesson four using the link in the description below if you haven't caught up to this episode yet. So how do I go about doing this? Well, let's just use an image name array. So image names equals some kind of array like so. So the first image comes from this assets thing called bear first. So let me just copy that and hit the back, introduce a string like that. And now I have this array called image names and I'm going to change the number of items in section to use this image names array dot count and then run my application again. So what you'll see is that our application is now a little bit more dynamic where it kind of takes an image name instead of just the random return four as the number of cells. So because I have one item in here, you can't really swipe through any pages. So why don't I include the other two images inside of my assets? So let's just drag that in there and drag this guy out of the way. And so basically, if you want these images in your folder and project, you can just right click and show in Finder and get it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the other two image names, which I believe is called heart second, and then is it leaf third? Hopefully that's correct. And let's run this application now. You'll see three pages, and they're all gonna have the bear pot image at the top, and we'll change the code to support the different images right now. So good job there. And let's see, I would like to access the cells image view somehow down here inside of cell for item at, and let's say, you know, cell dot bear image view or whatever that property is called in page cell, bear image view. We should be able to access it inside of this method, but we can't really do that yet because this cell, as you can see by this documentation all the way on the top right side, is actually a UI collection view cell. So because I really, you know, I know it's a page cell, I can do something called casting. Now let's just call it page cell. And then cell right here is now turned into page cell. And what that really means is I can access these properties on it like this and setting the image equal to UI image. And let's use this constructor of name like that. So what is the image name? Well, I guess I can do it above. But let image name equals the image names array and then use index path dot item for the correct slot in your collection view and then finally pump in the image name inside of the bare image view like so and then you'll see that the top has the bare image right there and then the heart and then the leaf as the third page so that's how you introduce you know dynamic images for each cell in your collection view and again, when you're doing this casting right here, you're essentially telling the code that, you know, I'm really aware of what this cell is, so just treat it like how I tell you to treat it. So that's kind of how that works. Now, the thing you do have to be careful about is that if you don't cast properly, your application will crash. So for example, if I say UI collection view cell right here and run the application again, it's not gonna be able to do this, so it's gonna crash, I just wanted to. Make sure you see that and you know, make sure you be careful about this type of casting uh, crash. So let me undo and turn that back into a page cell and we should be good to go here. All right, so what else do we have to do for our application so that we can you know, make it even more dynamic? Basically, uh, the text down here really needs to change. So, you know, doesn't have to say join us today in all of these cells. So why don't I introduce another array to capture this header text is what I'll call it. So let's say header, you know, strings perhaps and make it equal to some kind of array. And let's go into this application here 
And let's see, what does the first header say? Uh, join us today in our fun and games, exclamation mark. And then I'll end it with a quote. I'll get this second header really quickly here. Subscribe and get coupons on our daily events. I know it's probably not the you know, most entertaining thing to do to watch someone type, but I'm just going to do this one more time. VIP members, special services, like that. So those are my three header strings. And I can now use it inside of this cell area, cell for item at, and let's say cell dot description text view, which is this text blob thing. And let's set the text equal to, let's say this header strings. And we'll just do this inline is what this is called. We'll get the correct header string, depending on which index path item it is. And again, you can think of index path item to be the slot inside of your collection view. And you see your text is now changing like so. All right, so what is bad about this approach here? Well, if you remove this string right there and you try to run your code, what will happen is uh, it'll actually crash on the third cell because there isn't a third header string. So let me swipe over and you see it kind of crashes with an index out of range error. And you know, we only have two strings, so it's trying to access a third one and it's out of range, obviously. So that's the danger of doing something like this. So is there a better solution for this type of feature? Well, yes, there is. And this is where MVC kind of comes into play. So let's introduce the model layer for our application, which is very simple by just creating a new file. And there's really nothing special about the model layer. It's just something that holds our data that we want to present. So this class is going to be called page. And I guess it's really a struct, but we're just really used to saying class in computer science. So let's just call it a struct or a class, it doesn't matter. And what do we need for this page model? Well, let's introduce two different properties that we need to kind of present in each one of these cells here. So the first one is going to be image name. And of course it is a type string and let's say header text, let it be a type string as well. And there we go. We've just successfully defined our page model object and we can build our project. Everything's going to be okay. You can even run it to get it so that it's not in a crashing state anymore. And here we go. We can swipe through, swipe through. So good stuff there. And going back to swiping controller, I'm going to modify this code here to now use a page instead of these two arrays that are kind of uh, crash prone. So let's say let pages equal my array. And inside of here, I'm going to define these pages using some kind of constructor. So what this really needs to do is to say image name, right? But you see how the code completion isn't really showing up. One way to fix that is to actually copy this code or just cut it. And I'm just gonna put it up here temporarily. And that will make this constructor available, hopefully. Let me build my project page like that. And now image name and header text shows up. So Xcode 9, not the most uh, efficient editor, but you know this is just a trick to fix this issue here. And I'll put the code back in just a little bit. So the first image name is going to be this bare first thing. So paste that in there. The second header text will be this guy. And this is copy there. And then we'll you know create another one with image name and copy the heart second. A little bit tedious, but you know we'll just do this to get the job done here. Paste that in here. And when, there we go. We have two pages. So if you try to build and run, you're not going to be able to do so. Let's see what those errors down here are. So image names is now gone. So image names and header strings is gone as well. So this guy will just return pages.count instead. And inside of here, we have to modify the code a little bit. So instead of modifying the code, why don't I do it all over again? This will be easier to follow. So let's get the page for the correct uh, index path with let page equals pages pages and use index path dot item for the correct page 
and then cell dot bare image view dot image equals UI image like so. Get the name and let's just say page dot image name. And then while I'm here, let's just set up the description text view as well, which page dot header text. So those are the three lines that we need to kind of pump in the data that we need to show. And that will allow all of our kind of uh, pages to have the correct data. So why don't we get the third page in here and get it inside of the pages array. So hit a comma to define a third page. We construct it using this guy again. And then we'll grab leaf third as the third image name. And then VIP for the third header text, paste that in there. Run your application again, you'll see that you can swipe through three pages now instead of two. And that'll look something like this. So you see the leaf in the third page. So good stuff there. And what do we want to do now that we're kind of ready to fix this code a little bit here? So one thing I do want to kind of go through with you guys is when you're kind of setting up all this code here, you don't exactly want to kind of pollute your controller with all this view code. So what I mean by view code is setting up this stuff like the image and the description text. So what I like to do is to separate my controller from my view. And I will do that by introducing some kind of page variable onto page cell. So in a lot of production projects, what you'll see is these properties right here are actually private. So bare image view and description text view. These are really private. So once you specify that, you try to run your code and it doesn't work. And that's because these two properties are no longer accessible. If you click that, it says that uh, due to private production level, you can't access it. So these two properties are no longer there for you to you know, modify. And that's a, actually a good thing. So what I can do instead is to pass in the model object to the view. And that's kind of what the controller's uh, job is. It's to co coordinate the model between the view objects. So the way to do that is go into page cell, introduce this property on here called page. And we'll just set it equal to page like that. And because a class needs to initialize all of its objects to something, uh, we can fix that problem with just saying that it's optional and it'll start off as nil. And then finally, you can actually check when your pages are being set if you use this did set bit of syntax here. So I'm going to simply print out the pages image name like that every time I set a page on page cell. So that means when I'm in swiping controller and I can see build my project and say cell dot page now as that property, set it equal to this page from above this guy right here and run the code. Now you'll see every time I swipe through a page, it's going to set this page property on that class. And then it's going to print out exactly what these variables are. So if I go back, go to the next page, you'll see sometimes it prints out when it's trying to render out the cell. So that's kind of how this little bit of logic works. And that's how I'm separating the view from the controller. So let's just fix this so that we actually see the different images now, as well as the different text in the middle. So how do I do that? Well, let's comment out the print line and go back to page cell, right? And uh, inside of here, I have access to bare image view because I'm inside of the class itself. So I can say bare image view that image equals UI image. And again, use the name constructor like that. And you can say page.image name. Now this code isn't going to compile because you need to unwrap the image name. And that's because this constructor here, let me just unwrap it first. Uh, this name constructor takes in, uh, takes in a non-optional string. So that's why you need to unwrap it. Now, you have to be very careful to unwrap things like this with the exclamation mark. And uh, your code can crash because of that if your page is null. So I like to avoid this as much as possible. So I'm going to use a guard optional binding syntax. To show you how to do that, I'm going to say guard. Uh, let's see, guard let see, unwrapped page equals that page guy. If I'm not able to unwrap all of this properly, 
then it'll just return and it's not going to execute any, any of this code down below. So what this really means is I can use this unwrapped page instead of that page and that'll avoid using that exclamation mark and there's really no way that your code will crash using this syntax instead. So I'm going to drag and drag, swipe, swipe. You'll see these images are changing now, but uh, the description text isn't really changing on us. So why don't we fix our codes at the, you know, the text in the middle actually changes. So, you know, down in the page cell, we'll say description text view dot attributed text equals something. So I remember when we were setting up this description text view, we were actually using attributed text for the header and then the text down below. So let's just copy this right here. And let's paste that, I guess, up above here. And this guy, this join us text is really the page's header text, so page header text. And then we will change this bit of code a little bit later. So let's just remove that, set that to attributed text, and I believe I can run my code now. And you see how this is complaining about the page again? So let's just change this to unwrapped page, and I think my code is good to go now. Okay, let's just wait for the application to launch here, and we get, you see the join us today header, and subscribe and get our coupons, VIP member special services. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the text isn't exactly centered. It's kind of left aligned. So I'm going to fix that by going up here, setting the text alignment to dot center. Let's fix that issue and run the code again. And we're actually setting it down here as well. Text alignment equals dot center. But every time you set the attributed text again, it defaults back to the left alignment. That's kind of why we had that bug earlier. So. Last thing to fix is this description text here to actually say something different for each page. And we can do that by modifying our model object one more time by including a third property. So our page model is up here. And I'm going to say let body text be of type string. So Whenever you modify your model objects or any type of class, your constructors will change as well. So what I mean is if you click on that, you fix that, you need to include all of the properties and you need to initialize them when you're creating these objects. So this string right here needs to be the body text and I'll get that by going here. Let's see, nope, that is not the right one. I'll just grab it from the first page here. So it says that's and I will say, let's see, I guess I'll just type it again. Are you ready for loads and loads of fun? Um, wait any longer, exclamation mark. We hope to see you in our stores soon. So that's the fastest I can type. And I guess I'll fix this second one here. And I'll leave the third one up to you guys to fix. So get notified of the savings immediately when uh, we announce them on our website. I'm sure you guys can probably type this out faster than I can, but this is the best I can do during a live recording like this. So feedback you have. And then finally, if you fix this last guy, we'll just use an empty string like that. And we can run our code, but we haven't really introduced the body text inside of our page cell yet. So it's all going to say, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? So instead of here, we can make some changes. Now, because I've done this already, I know that if you just change the code like this, so it's the unwrapped page dot uh, body text, you're going to have a bit of a problem with the new lines in the text view. Let me just show you what that looks like right here. So that's the problem. We have this text kind of stuck together. So the way to fix this is to kind of undo that change there. And let me get my string back. I'm going to use something called string interpolation by putting this little bit of syntax here with body text. So the way to read this is this string contains new line, new line, new line, and then whatever this variable is, 
that's going to be kind of concatenated onto the end of the string, which makes it look like this right here. So are you ready for loads and loads of fun? And then it says get notified of the savings. Finally, the last page has no body text because the controller right here doesn't define anything for the last page. So that's kind of how all of this works. And I guess I would like to conclude this lesson by going through exactly what the MVC pattern looks like and how we used it inside of our application. So first off, we have model view controller for MVC. And the model layer is this page object right here. So let me move this object back to its class so that our code is a little bit cleaner. And the model contains three properties on it or however many you want to define. And then we want to kind of define our view object as our page cell. So the page cell is responsible for presenting all of the data of this particular model, which is the page model. And then the controller, all it's responsible for doing is kind of coordinating all of the views and the models so that they know about the correct object it needs to display. And that's done through line 42 and 43 right here. So it's simply sending the page object right here into the page cell. So now we have separation of concerns is what we call it, where the controller just knows about the controller, the page cell knows about the page, and then the page itself is just really, really stupid or dumb is what we would like to call it sometimes, where it doesn't really know about anything except for data and the properties that it has to be aware of. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson on MVC. If you wanna learn more about how to create model objects and how to interact with them, you can check out this brand new course on Core Data Fundamentals where we do exactly that. So in this new course, we're gonna be modeling out two classes, the teacher class and then the student class. And we're also going to define the relationship between these two model objects. So hopefully you check out that course by using the link in the description below. Now I'm really sure if you're trying to improve your Swift development skills, you're gonna get a lot out of this course. Okay, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you wanna download the source code for today's video, you can check it out using the link in the description below as well. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.